Fancy, fancy, fancy. Hey everyone, it's Anna, and I'm back with another vintage cookbook. This time I'm reviewing Good Housekeeping's Book of Vegetables, and the tagline reads, To tempt the most reluctant appetites. This book was published in 1958, and it is part of this little Good Housekeeping series. I absolutely love these books. These are among some of my favorite vintage cookbooks. You're almost always guaranteed to have adorable illustrations in these. The first note I have on this book is fonts. And so just starting with the cover, I mean, this fun, fun, like vegetables, just the way that's written. I love how they make the letter E red for some reason. I don't know why, but it just pops. Even the font they use for Good Housekeeping's Book Of is, is super cute. And then when you open the cover, I mean, look at that lettering. Oh, I love it. And they made it different from the cover, yet somehow it still works. Even the chapter headers have the super fun font. They do have a section in this book called Vegetables from A to Z. Each section opens with a letter and it lists like what vegetables they're gonna be covering and each one is a little bit different. There's A, but then B looks like this. I mean, C is a little bit fancier. Oh my gosh, I love letter M for mushrooms. I mean, oh. the illustrations and drawings in these little Good House Kimmy books, just excellent. A few recipes that I'd like to highlight, cabbage nibblers. So it's, it's like a combination of butter, cream cheese, and blue cheese and some seasonings. And then you chop up some red cabbage very fine. You mince some green pepper and celery, you mix it all together. And then it's kind of like you're making a vegetable cheese ball. You roll them into little tiny balls and you roll them in walnuts and serve them that way. So they kind of remind me of the cheese balls that I made for the Dollar Tree video. They count frozen French fries among vegetable appetizers and soups. So they have a little French fry section here. The first one says Easy Hots. First off, Easy Hots, like what? <laughs> but then secondly, it just says, prepare frozen French fries as label direct. Sprinkle with salt and serve finger style. It's not a recipe really, it's merely a suggestion. They do have some other suggestions here, like Parmesan style. So you cook your French fries and you sprinkle them with Parmesan. That sounds delicious. And then dipped. Provide bowl of ketchup or chili sauce for dunking. It just feels like filler. <laughs> because I, that's just how you eat French fries. Look at this cute bunny. I love it so much. And then below that it ha we have Susan's carrots. This really seems like just buttered carrots with salt, pepper, and parsley. Again, not really a recipe, but I guess if you're forgetting how to serve carrots, this is perfect. Also, we get a cute bunny out of it. There's magic in the way they're cut. Dare to be different. Cut vegetables on the bias in slivers or slices. It means quicker cooking, handsomer, surer to please vegetables. <laughs> it just reminds me of like, a form of self-expression through vegetables, especially because you know, you know that these cookbooks were really, really geared toward women mostly. I mean, I can't say for sure. I didn't live in 1958, but maybe some women were looking for a way to express themselves and getting creative with vegetables. You know, maybe that was an outlet. Cut those vegetables on the bias. Oh, I absolutely loved the title of this recipe. And we have a picture. Vegetable dinner man style. This is vegetable dinner man style. <laughs> oh, it, it does look inviting. It looks really tempting. Just to sum it up, it's, it's like tomatoes stuffed with a boxed mac and cheese dinner, refrigerator pickles, I think, and we have the buttered carrots. And then I think this is like a cheese kind of bread. This all looks delicious. I would eat any of this in a heartbeat. I don't know why it's man style. Maybe just because there's so much food here. Cooking with canned and packaged vegetables. I, I wanted to shout out the title of this recipe as well. Kidney bean sophisticate. Ooh. So this is kidney beans from a can drained with some rosemary, some red wine, and then some salt. Very sophisticated. It says it's nice with broiled bacon. I believe them. A lot of things are nice with broiled bacon. Oh, this, this was also a good one from the frozen vegetable section. John J. Lima's. Attorney at law. <laughs> Today's recipe is brought to us by the letter P. Today I am going to be preparing sweet potato volcanoes. And look at these kids. I mean, 
I think that they are eating the sweet potato volcanoes and they seem delighted. Sticking with the Thanksgiving theme, I wanted to give this one a try. This seems like a really fun and different way to serve sweet potatoes. I usually just bake them. Of course, at Thanksgiving, I've, I've had baked sweet potatoes with butter and brown sugar and marshmallows on top, also very delicious. This recipe starts with some mashed sweet potatoes that you add crushed pineapple to. So that's exciting because I like pineapple. And then just you put them in little mounds on a baking dish and you top each one with a marshmallow. So I think the idea is to have the marshmallow kind of like toast and melt a little bit, maybe going down the sides. We'll see if that's how it works. Let's get started. In order to make sweet potato volcanoes, you are going to need two cups of well-seasoned mashed sweet potatoes. I made these last night. I seasoned them with a little bit of salted butter, a splash of cream, some cinnamon, some vanilla, and a little bit of honey. I think some of the success of this recipe really depends on how good your mashed sweet potatoes are. Half a cup of drained crushed pineapple, a dash of nutmeg, and some marshmallows. I started by preheating my oven to 400 degrees and now I'm gonna combine the mashed sweet potatoes and the crushed pineapple. I'm not sure if I got a big enough bowl, but we'll see. Mashed sweet potatoes and we've got our pineapple and that's going in the bowl. This is a pretty simple recipe. If you have your sweet potatoes already mashed, then we add just a dash of nutmeg. I don't use a lot of nutmeg for things, so is this okay? It may or may not be slightly expired. <laughs> so we're gonna mix these things together. Just love the color of sweet potatoes, and I really love it with the pineapple in here. And let's add coconut. I'm not gonna add coconut, but lately I've been saying, I wanna add coconut to everything. Honestly, though, I could see it going in this dish and being really tasty. <laughs> Heap into four to six mounds on greased pie plate. Okay, so I have my pie plate, my little Pyrex pie plate. I went ahead and sprayed it with just a little bit of uh, vegetable oil. And it says to spoon these, but I really wanted to try to pipe them. I bought larger piping bags, but like the max fill line is not that much. <laughs> and then I actually did buy a large piping tip and a large coupler, but they don't work together. So I guess I'm just gonna try this with the coupler. It has this opening. I also have a large scoop on standby if this does not work. Okay, not great at filling piping bags. I don't know if anyone is. It is kind of a messy thing. I saw this trick somewhere where you put this in like a big cup. Cosmos pizza, some of the best pizza in Boulder. Okay, let's see here. I think I am getting very close to the max. It's nice that they have the fill line on them because the piping bags I was using, like they didn't have anything. I didn't put all the mixture in here, but I put quite a bit and we'll, we'll refill it. Okay, that's not bad, that's not bad. I don't really know how much to do though. I feel like I'm making these too big. <laughs> Considering how much mixture we have, I think this is gonna be just about right because I have a little bit more mixture over there. I may even be able to add a little bit more to these mounds. So let's see here what we got. Okay, I'm not doing too bad. I mean, if you have watched some of my other videos that I've tried to use a piping bag with, doesn't always go well, but this is this is pretty good. Okay, some of these smaller ones I'm gonna add to. Three, four, five, six. Okay, still have some more, but I like this whole sort of like daisy shape that I have going on. So I'm just gonna keep adding. Okay, so this one is kind of a uh, toppling, so. <laughs> We'll put that one at the back in the thumbnail. <laughs> Think that's just about all of our mixture. Top each mound with large marshmallow. I almost feel like putting a smaller marshmallow might have been better. These are kind of big, but we'll see. Oh, that's not too bad. How cute. I love these already. I'm pretty sure they're gonna taste good too. Couple of quick ingredients that I did not mention. It just says to dot with butter or margarine and brown sugar. I tried not to make my mashed sweet potatoes too, too sweet to begin with, just because I knew we were adding pineapple and some other things. Dot. Someone should sell butter dots, like little tiny dots of butter. I mean, I guess I don't mind doing this, but how fun would it, how nice would it be to just like have little butter sprinkles that you could put on things like this? Like I dot all kinds of things with butter. I'm doing like two butter dots per volcano. Who doesn't have a dot? You need a dot. Maybe they make butter dots and I'm just unaware. This happens frequently. I'm, I'm not really informed about the cutting edge butter news. Okay, that was tedious. 
All right, and now we're supposed to put some brown sugar. I'm not gonna do too much. I think I'll just scoop a little into my hand and then sprinkle from there. Thanksgiving is my favorite food holiday, I think. Easter is my favorite candy holiday. Thanksgiving is my favorite food in general holiday. So here's what we're looking like. Very cute. I would say already this is a success just for how they look. I think they're adorable. It says bake for 25 minutes. So I'm gonna pop these in the oven, clean up my mess, and then we'll be back to give them a taste. They toppled over. I kind of expected that, but they smell really good. My whole kitchen smells all like sweet and toasty and caramelized. So I'm pretty excited to give these a try. I think these are gonna be a little bit better than the last video I made, which was Effie's pumpkin soup. <laughs> if you wanna laugh, check that one out. They don't, they're not like separate exactly. It's not that kind of thing. Do you have to do a little bit of scooping? I'm pretty sure these are gonna be good. So that's what it looks like. Let's give this a taste. I think I've got a little bit of everything. Here we go. I like them. I don't know if I prefer the pineapple in there though. I love pineapple on its own and I love sweet potatoes on their own. I think I would have liked this a little bit better had it just been the mashed sweet potatoes with, with no pineapple. It tastes pretty good though. I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm gonna eat all of these. The marshmallow, it's kind of fun because it formed like a crispy shell so you can just kind of break it. I'm gonna take another bite. I'm not quite sure I like the tanginess that the pineapple lends to this. I think I, I do prefer more of a sweet, caramelized kind of sweet potato, but these are pretty good. I think the pineapple might be growing on me too. Let me, let me just try another bite. <laughs> I think I just wanna eat all of this. I kind of like the pineapple more and more with each bite. So I think the first bite, maybe I just wasn't used to it. Okay, one, I'm just gonna do it again. I'm just gonna eat this whole volcano. Mmm, <laughs> mmm. That was by far the best bite because I had the most caramelized crispy part of the marshmallow. So I'm also wondering, you know, these toppled over because of the, the marshmallows themselves. They kind of didn't, didn't stay upright. Wondering if you could use marshmallow cream on these instead. I don't know how well that toasts up. It would do a lot for the visual effect, I think. Pretty tasty. I would recommend this. It's a little bit of a different way to serve sweet potatoes. You know, you could try this at Thanksgiving, you could try it at Friendsgiving. I feel like Friendsgiving is just like a little bit more casual, a little less pressure, so you can always try, try new things. I cooked a recipe from Good Housekeeping's Book of Vegetables. Thanks so much for coming back to my videos week after week, seeing my weird kooky content. I really appreciate each and every one of you. Don't forget to like this video. And if you do like this video, you might like my other videos and you might consider subscribing to my channel. I post content similar to this just about every week. And if you would like to see what else I'm up to, you can check me out on Instagram. My handle is underscore cooking the books underscore. Thanks again. And I will see you in my next video. Bye. Bye.